Now, it's not often I get a chance to sit down with someone who works off the coast of Brazil. In fact, it's never happened before. <laughs> this gentleman, Marcio Garcia, has a very unusual ministry uh, that uh, began, and welcome, by the way. Yeah. Nice to have you. Thank you. When you, f what, you fell overboard or you were forced overboard one time when you were a 20-year-old student? Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, I was in the Bible College and someone came and uh, to preach in that missions conference, the very first missions conference I ever uh, took part. And uh, he said, I, I'm living in an in a, in a island and I, I found some fishing communities around and they are unreached. So when he said... Unreached being, they've never heard the gospel before. Never heard the gospel. Right. Okay. And so when I heard that uh, fisherman, that word, that hit my mind like 30 years ago and never left me. Now, when I was reading your bio, it, it, you, you, um, you ended up swimming one time <laughs> because oh, yeah. a storm threw your boat towards shore and you were, you, were, you, were you thrown out of the boat or did the boat capsize? What happened there? No, yeah, there, I don't know which story is this one. There are so many. Well, well this one, this says you, you grabbed a plastic bag full of Gospels of oh, John okay. and managed to make it to a nearby fishing village. That's the story. Yeah, there are some like that, but in one I really sunk in one of those days. Yeah. But the, the one I, that was just amazing to you now is a very good, I, I bring good memories, is that was a very uh, f far away island, uh, deep into the ocean. So when we got there, there was no beaches or nothing, very remote, simple. So I had to swim. There was a friend of mine, another missionary. You have to find the right wave. Yeah. Because if you, if you choose wrongly, the, a big one comes and smash you yeah. against the rocks. So, but I, I used to be a diver, so I knew how to do that. And, and I always use the Gospel of John because John was a fisherman. Mm. So it's easier to connect. And when I got there, I was, the reception couldn't be worse. But somehow the Lord brought that animosity and the youth leader for the village got saved that day, the very first visit. It was very unusual. Uh, now tell me about this. You, you, your body surf basically into this island. <laughs> uh, you got a Gospel of John. You're meeting people you, who've never seen you before. You, you come in like an alien from another planet because yeah, they're living in this remote island. And before the day is done, one of them, the key youth leader, has accepted Christ as his savior. How does that work? Yeah, that 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 was. Like, what do you do? How do you how do you like? What do you do? You sit down and say, "God loves you. And has a wonderful plan for your life." I mean, how do you start the conversation? <laughs> oh yeah, this is the key. So first, the very actually, you have to start the conversation, especially because someone comes very angry to you. That what happened? The guy came very with a very angry face. So I started speaking because I, I want to set the, the level of conversation. And they speak Portuguese. Yes, a kind of Portuguese, kind like, of Portuguese. like my English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. And, and so I, I, I said, oh, what happened to you? He had a cloth wrapped around his foot. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I stepped in a sea urchin and I got hurt. I said, oh, I stepped in a sea urchin. And I, we started talking. So he told me, a week ago, a big boat, like professional fishing boat, stopped in the island and they tried to rape our girls. And all the male, they have to paddle little canoes to the, to the shores to mm. sell their fish. All the males were there in the, in the mainland. And the, the, kid, the kids and girls had to run and they messed with everything here. So we promised we would never allow outsiders again in the community. That's when we came. The mm. warfare was there. Mm. The problems were there. So, but he said, but you were different. That was the beginning. And how do you suppose he knew you were different? Because the way we were talking, he could see this is the, you know, the warfare is there, but the Holy Spirit is also there. Mm. So something he knew. Yeah. Uh, and so he said, yes, we are different. I will tell you why, let's go to our place. But how does a, how does a, how does a fisherman <clears throat> on a remote island off the, off the coast of Brazil, uh -huh. who hardly speaks your language, who's angry about outsiders, who's seen you body surf onto his island. <laughs> uh, how, how does he connect you with Jesus and the message of the gospel? 
Yeah, this, this is grace. I, always, I never talk about God because mm -hmm. I don't know what he thinks about God. Right. I talk about the Creator right. because He knows the creation very well. He knows that intuitively? Yes, because the creation feeds His kids. Yeah. So somehow that thing is good. And uh, everyone knows in the villages that there, there is a creator. If, even people had never told them, they know that there was a creator. So I talk, I talk about the creator, and so I jump to his love and care, and I go to Jesus. And they accept the message. Like you, you, you have seen entire <laughs> communities uh, mm -hmm. come to faith through, yeah. through your work. T take me back to uh, the uh, beginning. Uh, I was reading about you. Uh, your first priority was to survey 5,600 miles of Brazilian <laughs> coastline. How long did that take and how did you do that? Oh, I thought that it would take about eight years by my first plan because I couldn't take people from their families for a long time. Right. So they have to go and come and right. it would take tons of dollars. I was planning that thing and so an idea hit my mind, fly. Well, why not? Mm. I went and talked to Mission Aviation Fellowship. Oh, yeah. Close friend of ours in Brazil. Mm. Actually, the executive director was like my brother. Mm. And he said, Marcio, come on, let's do it together. In three days, we flew f 24 hours, and we, re we, we found close to 80% of the fishing communities along the coast. Wow. In 24 hours fly now, flight. Now, did I read correctly that uh, you identified about 2,000 villages that had not been reached with the gospel? That's right, along the coast. Along the coast. And now it's been reduced to about 400. That's what I read. 400 uh, still remaining unreached. Yeah. Yeah. But we are already reaching this uh, 400. So it's... Brother, I, when I was in the Bible college and I had that vision, I thought that my great grandkids would see Brazilian coastline reached. But it's pretty much done. Wow. So. It's unexpected for you and for me. Now, <laughs> until I heard about you and read about you, I didn't even know that there were all of these islands. Like uh, Brazilians. Yeah, they don't know. yeah. And, and Brazilians don't know this? No, they don't know. I am from a coastal city, and I had never heard about these people. They are hidden between big cities in remote areas. How are they governed? D d does Brazil consider them to be a part of Brazil? And is there any kind of governmental representation from these uh, villages? No. Uh, so they're just basically marginalized. Yes, that's it. See, I thought, you know, when I, when I first encountered this, this concept of your fishers of men uh, vision, that uh, you'd be talking about the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the vast inland river systems, you know, mm -hmm. and all of these unreached people groups in the, this huge forests of, mm -hmm. uh, of Brazil. But you don't go there. You mm -hmm. stay out in the Atlantic. That's right. Now, getting mm -hmm. from island to island, is this, by boat? Yes, by boat. Um, do you sail yourself or do you have someone do it for you? Depends. I used to do by myself. Uh, now I'm more in leadership. I'm not planning church any longer. Mm -hmm. But some missionaries, they are good on that and it's good. it's good. When they can do by themselves, we prefer because it's a connection to local people. But some others, if they try, they die. <laughs> yeah. So, because they don't have the skills. Well, I mean, the, 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 that open water is treacherous at the best of times. There's a lot of storms, uh, currents. Uh, That's right. Fog, darkness. Uh, uh, and, and I'm sure there's quite a bit of distance be between some of these islands. Yeah. But we also reach out along the channels because mm. some of these islands, they are so close to the coast that there is an ocean channel between the island and the main ch coast. Mm. And if, if you are a fisherman with a small dugout canoe, you don't want big waves. Mm. You look for a very protected area. Mm. So I would say I, <laughs> I will try most. Maybe more than 50% are along the ocean channels. Mm. I think it's pretty much a half and half. Now, uh, some of these unreached people groups, I'm sure, have their own religious systems. Mm -hmm. Some would be quite animistic, I expect. Some would be uh, into... Uh, maybe a lot of occult practices. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do when you encounter a lot of spiritual darkness? How do you handle that? 